Hello and welcome to Boden in Swedish Lapland. So now I have received this one. This is the Skywatcher uh, Maxut of Newton 190. So uh, this will be pretty interesting. It has a focal length of 1000 mm, so it will be substantially longer than my previous uh, 80ED refractor. But now I will open this one. Yeah, it's a pretty big tube and uh, quite heavy. Okay, so this is a beauty. Oh, it's pretty heavy. Um, and what's unique with this uh, Maxito Newton design compared to an ordinary Newton? is uh, that it has uh, um, corrector glass in front here uh, that makes it uh, coma free and you don't need a flattener either. So it's uh, well, well suited for astrophotography. Uh, so with, with this one I, I can reach uh, targets that uh, are too small for my uh, widescreen uh, uh, ED80 ref refractor. So I'm very excited to, to test this and I <laughs> couldn't believe it uh, almost, but, but um, when I looked at the forecast earlier today, uh, they promise uh, clear sky for tomorrow night. So today I will uh, attach the EAF focuser from CWO and uh, yeah. Test this little beauty. So yesterday the sky was clear, so I went out to my cabin outside Boden. It's a kind of Bortel 4-ish uh, spot, so quite good. Um, it was a lovely late autumn evening and it was completely calm and uh, a bit chilly with, with frost on the ground. It looks pretty good for tonight. It's almost clear sky. So I'm outside Boden here in Swedish, Swedish Lapland. And uh, tonight I will uh, try the Maxit of Newton scope that I got yesterday. So I will begin to put up my gear here and uh, it's uh, completely calm on the, on the lake. Uh, so I hope it will be a, a perfect first light evening. And it's a little bit cold, it's frost on the, on the ground here, the grass. Okay, everything is almost connected. So this is a big piece compared to what I'm used to. Uh, so I needed uh, 15 kilos of counterweights here to get some kind of balance in the rig. Um, the sun is below the horizon. 
So I think I will can do a polar alignment in one hour or so. But first I will wait and uh, uh, wait for for this tube to cool down and then I will do a, a check of the collimation. And to collimate is uh, one big difference from my former small refractor. But I hope it's uh, pretty easy. I can see Polaris now, so I will start to do a collimation. So for this I use uh, this one, a laser from Farpoint Astro. I can see that the red dot is almost in in the middle here. Okay, spot on. And now I will uh, control the primary mirror and then I use this uh, chassis tool. So I put it in there. Take my head headlight and uh, it looks actually perfect from from the beginning. Okay, I think everything is connected and uh, tonight I will uh, shoot with my one shot color camera, the CWO 2600MC Pro. And it's, uh, it looks uh, very good now, it's clear. So I will uh, begin to do the polar alignment now. I struggled a bit with the polar alignment and I think it was because I was a little bit sloppy with the, with the focusing. But uh, I started to shoot and uh, the first uh, subs looked uh, very promising and it was very exciting to, to see the first light through, through this one. Okay, I'm done with the polar alignment, not the fastest ever but uh, in a way. So I have found the M51 Galaxy now and I wait for uh, wait for uh, calibration of the guide camera, guide scope and um, well then I think I'm about to shoot. Um, the sky looks quite good still and I hope it will keep clear for at least a couple of hours more. Okay, there we have it, Messier 51. And uh, the guiding looks good also. So I shoot uh, three minutes exposures now. I went inside the, the cabin to get some warmth and, and to eat something and uh, when I came out again I saw something that we do not want to see on the sky, clouds. So I took a, a break in the shooting and eventually it, uh, it cleared again so I, I could continue. It's uh, minus 3-4 degrees Celsius. So I put on a little bit warmer jacket, um, not, not that cold, but um, it feels, all, all, always feels quite cold in the beginning of the autumn when you're not used with, with real cold weather. Uh, well, I have uh, done about 15 subs so far and they look pretty good. It has been some clouds, but they uh, they disappeared. 
but I know that will be that will come bad weather later this evening. But I hope I can collect enough so I can uh, do some test version of M51. I ran out of luck, however, and uh, I discovered that I had some uh, dew on on the large uh, front lens. So um, I quit shooting then, and uh, then I, I saw that there were some more clouds coming in also. So I got uh, some dew on the on the front lens. Um, I have ordered a, a large uh, heated uh, dew shield, but I haven't got it yet. But I definitely have to use one in in these conditions. Uh, but besides that, um, I have collected the, probably around one hour of useful data of the Messier 51, a large spiral in in the constellation Canis Venatici. Uh, the guiding has been confident also or uh, very good, I have to say. Mm. So, uh, I will stop. There are some clouds coming on in now also. And uh, then I will wait for a dew shield and uh, a new clear skies and continue to evaluate this uh, interesting uh, Maxit of Newton. Uh, tube. This was the first light uh, with my new tube, but uh, many things were quite similar compared to shooting with my ED80 refractor. Uh, but there were some lessons to learn also. Collimation seems pretty easy with this tube and, uh, and the tools from uh, Farpoint Point Astro um, feels very solid and uh, uh, collimation only takes a, a few minutes. The large uh, front lens uh, requires a, a dew shield and a heater. Um, it was back ordered when I when I received the tube, um, but it's on on its way now. So I hope uh, that one will solve this problem with the dew. Uh, I collected about 45 minutes worth of data of uh, N51, uh, far from enough, but uh, it, it was a test uh, shooting. Um, very interesting target and I will spend a lot more time on it uh, this season from a really dark location. However, I discovered something worrying, uh, elongated stars. Um, at this moment, I don't really know what uh, what caused these elongated stars. Um, the guiding looked very secure. Um, maybe the cause is a phenomenon known as differ differential flexure. And uh, differential flexure occurs uh, when there are one or more flexures somewhere in the imaging system. Uh, the longer focal length uh, makes this tube more prone to such small flexures. One possible source I have identified is the focuser. And uh, as you can see, there are some flex here in the focus tube. So this is uh, pretty bad. I have to find out the solution or maybe to change to a more solid focus focuser. I don't know yet. Well, overall it was uh, very fun and exciting to try this new tube. The longer focal length makes it a little more, more demanding, but it's fun to learn new methods and to do some problem solving. And I think it will be very rewarding when I solve the problem with the elongated stars. Um, well. That was all for now, so don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow my Arctic astrophotography adventures.